Wow. I have been dreaming for a long time for Todd Duncan to be my opener. Is that, is that unbelievable? He opened for me. I'm so excited to be here and I don't, I have 14 minutes. I don't know why I'm starting with a joke when I have so much to talk about. But I'm so excited to be here with you guys and it's, it's hard when you want to be the funny guy, the lighthearted guy, the social media guy that, that so shows up looking at, at a, as like a worker more than a professional. And they give me the topic of what you should stop doing. So there's no fun in this. This is going to be excruciatingly painful for you because I just have to give it to you with, without kind of making it lighthearted at first. And so what I want us to understand about social media is that there is this thing called social proof. Has anybody heard this phrase before? Oh my gosh, so many fans of social proof. That's incredible. Social proof is this, we don't trust people anymore. We can say that we do, but we don't. And, and here's how we know. When, when, when you are told about a great restaurant by a friend of yours, what's the first thing you do? You look it up, right? You don't, you don't go there like a crazy person. <laughs> you look it up. And if you start to look it up and you go, oh, there was a hair in their taco salad and this family of four got kicked out by the manager for sending their food back? Who's the idiot? Your friend or the internet? Your friend. And so the unfortunate truth that I have to share with you guys today is it doesn't just matter anymore that you're good at your job. You have to also show that you're good at your job on the internet. Because when people find out about you, when you guys find out about me, here I am, right, Todd Duncan opens for me, and you're like, dang, who is this dude? He's super legit and big time. If I do a decent job from the platform, you're going to go look me up and try to see, is Kyle as good as I think he is? So this is what we're fighting against this is what we've got to figure out. This is why there are three very specific things, guys, that you have to stop doing. And the first one is this. Guys, we have to stop selling on social media. Thank you to the 18 of you that laughed at my meme that, that I put on here. Can, can, we, can we poke fun at realtors for a second? And it's not that you guys are way better, but you're not as bad as them. And And... This has never been more true than in the height of COVID. I'm seeing Facebook posts of people saying, we just lost Aunt Sally. And then the next post, we're essential in Texas, baby, from a realtor. Read the room, bro. What, what are you doing? That isn't making you trustworthy. That isn't establishing you as an expert. That makes you look silly. But here's our problem. For most of you in this room, you were taught about social media as a business tool. That's the way we see it. We see Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and LinkedIn and YouTube and Snapchat and, and, and whatever the next one will be out by the end of the weekend. And we see it as a business tool. So for most of you, the only way you know to show up there is for business. And so you know how to post your closing photo and you know how to, how to, how to post a graphic because of what the Fed just did or didn't say. But you haven't done any of the high touch stuff that Todd talked about. We haven't built rapport with all these people to just shove our business in their face. We gotta stop selling because think about now this story. When somebody meets you, nice things are said about you, 
but then that person goes to your Instagram, what do they see? Wow, that dude loves him some him. <laughs> wow. Like, cool, you have 100 closing photos on there. Who freaking gives a crap? Nobody cares. If there's nothing there that humanizes you, if there's nothing there that makes you relatable, you're going to lose opportunity that you never knew you had because you use social media to push your crap on people instead of using it to be the expert, to nurture people, to support and love people, to connect. So you gotta stop selling. You are the selling point. You are that. We gotta do this different. But, but not only stop selling, we, we've gotta stop, guys, making excuses. I mean, it's unbelievable. Do we, anybody in the room like, feel like you're good at social media? And this isn't a trap. I'm not gonna come down there and be like, so you raised your hand, let me make you look foolish. That's not what this is about. If you're good at social media, you have heard every excuse in the book. Well, like I would do social media, but like, you know, I don't like the way I look. Is that unbelievable? Every single one of us have said this. Yet you will show up to coffee with a realtor without a ski mask on. <laughs> really? You, you, you've never, at least I don't think you've like hired a body double to go represent you in that meeting because you had a big old pimple on your face. Why can we do this so well in person, but all of a sudden when, when we grab this little device and I'm like, bro, what you just said is fire, now say it. Uh, well, uh, well, what, uh, what, um, what, uh, huh? Is this not true? We have all these excuses. We feel too old or too skinny or too fat. Guys, can I just tell you something? If you feel too fat, you look like the way you look. This, th this is the body that God currently has put me in to take this stage today. That's why I'm wearing black. <laughs> so all you people, y'all didn't know y'all were gonna get a little fashion advice at Fuse today. But, but if you're feeling a little bit on the hefty side, quit wearing bright colors all the time. Get in something slimming. This is my power suit, I feel good in this. And if I just take my loafers off, they can ask me to move chairs and I'll just jump in and go. We gotta stop making excuses. Why are we so unwilling to go to the place where most of your people spend most of their time? This is it, this is where they are. The biggest excuse that, that I get the most that, I, that, that I, I, I laugh at at times is, I don't know what to say. What do I say? But isn't it inter interesting if we go back to coffee Right, and, and, and when you have coffee with people, do you, do you take note cards in? So that if y'all begin to run out of things to talk about, you can just whip it out and go, so what's your favorite color? Wow, interesting, pink, mine's blue. No, you and I could sit at coffee and I could ask you mortgage related questions for four hours and you would never run out of things to talk to me about. And so I want to give you guys two questions, and they're not on the slides. So if you care enough, you're going to have to write them down or remember. But there's two questions that will help you never run out of content for the rest of your life. The first question is, what am I surprised that people don't already know? So when you're having meetings with people and you say something and they go, whoa, 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 whoa. say that again, what was that? That should register in your brain, I need to make a video about that. Because if they don't understand, I bet there's a hundred other people that don't understand, and that'd be a great video on my website, on my YouTube channel, on my social, for all the other people that don't know. The other question is, what do you get asked the most about mortgages? What do you get asked the most about mortgages? If we had to ballpark real quick, 
in your typical transaction, how many questions does your buyer ask you? Somebody say a thousand. I mean, I, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a lender, I'm not a broker, but I think that might be slightly facetious possibly, right? 20 to 50, is that fair? So guys, listen to this. Every transaction you do, you are getting asked 20 to 50 questions. And yet you're still going to show up to my seminar and tell me you don't know what to talk about on social media? You know why we struggle with this? Because the questions that you get asked the most also happen to be the least sexy. So your ego says, are you really going to do a, a video called like, what's a HELOC? Cool, bro. You're one of the good ones. And our ego says, dude, don't do that. That's going to get 50 views, 80 views, 100 views. And then we don't do it. We talk ourselves out of it because it's not sexy. It's not going to go viral. When if you could get 84 people to watch a video about what is a HELOC, guys, that's the best barrel of leads you've ever had. Those people are in it. We got to do this better. But the last thing, as I, as I wrap this up, is we have to stop avoiding video. Do we have any New Girl fans in the house? Come on. So this is Schmidt, right? And, and isn't it so true that, like, this is how we feel at coffee, and then that's the version that we look like on video. We got to overcome this stuff. And, and so here is my superpower that I want to impart on you guys. I care more about helping people than I care about looking stupid. That's my superpower. I care more about helping people than I do looking stupid. And so if I believe that I have something worthy of help, I'm going to jump on camera and talk about it. And I do it in one take. And, and I don't try to get the perfect one. And, and I don't try to, try to make sure it positions me in the perfect light. Because we're supposed to make this about them, not us. I will very intentionally, guys, do videos. I have, I have three kids. I have a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 4-month-old. Pray for us. I, I will intentionally do video at our house where I know one of my kids will be a distraction because I want the psychological effect to happen that is... Kyle the expert, oh, Kyle the loving father, as I face palm them out of my office, I want you to laugh, and then I jump right back into being the expert. Guys, in four seconds, I took you on a journey of this is why I love Kyle, because he's real, man. He's not trying to be fake. How many of you have stopped recording a video because your child was a distraction? You've stopped recording a video because your dog started barking. Guys, the other, the other day, it was not the other day, it was like last year. I was doing a webinar for about a thousand people. I mentioned our dog Parker. The chat box begins to fill up with people going, oh, we want to see Parker, we want to see... And Parker is used to being screamed at by me to never come in my office. So when I called her in my office, she was bewildered. I pick her up, she pees all over me. <laughs> but you can't see it. And so I have this whole moment to go, do I try to pretend like this is just a cute dog that I don't want to murder? Or, or do I tell people? And so I told everybody, I was like, screw you guys for telling me to go get my dog. Because now I have pee all over me, it's pulled on the floor, and I had 20 minutes of this webinar left. I still run into people to this day that go, bro, you know when I met you? That webinar when your dog peed on you? That was hilarious. What are we willing to do to go and serve people? And I want to end us with this. Stop hoping to reap from the seeds you didn't sow. Your social media is not going to produce anything for you 
when all you post is the crap content corporate gives you or your leadership gives you or a coaching company gives you. It's not gonna grow because that's not you. Quit putting 30 hashtags in every post. That's not what humans do. That's what sales robots do. Guys, we gotta do this better because people need you. People don't know what they're doing, they're desperate. The news is trying to scare the crap out of everybody and you're just sitting by and letting it happen because of your discomfort that you're unwilling to face on social media. I hope this helped, guys. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the rest of the conference.